How's it going everyone? John Castillo here and today we're comparing Ursas. So on the left we have the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2. On the right we have the Ursa Broadcast G2. Now this camera in particular is very interesting because it costs $2,000 less than its cinematic counterpart and you can argue it has a few more things going for it. So let's start by looking at some big picture comparisons. First things first, let's talk about the price. The Ursa Mini comes in at $5,995, whereas the Ursa Broadcast comes in at $4,195. They both have super 35 millimeter sensors. The Ursa Mini has a 4.6K sensor. The Ursa Broadcast has a 6K sensor. The Ursa Mini has Gen 4 color science. The Ursa Broadcast has Gen 5 color science. According to Blackmagic Design, the Ursa Mini has 15 stops of dynamic range, whereas the Ursa Broadcast has 13 stops of dynamic range. The Ursa Mini can also record up to 300 frames per second in HD, whereas the Ursa Broadcast can record up to 150 frames per second in HD. As far as codecs are concerned, the Ursa Mini can record ProRes and Blackmagic RAW, whereas the Ursa Broadcast can record ProRes, Blackmagic RAW, and H.264 slash H.265, although I would say that one comes with a huge asterisk because you are severely limited by what you can record in those formats. And last but not least, this camera, the Ursa Mini, does not have any sort of internal streaming, whereas the Ursa Broadcast, you can, with a dongle, plug in an Ethernet, and stream directly to Facebook or YouTube. So if you look through that comparison list and keep in mind that the Ursa Broadcast is $2,000 cheaper than its cinematic counterpart, it does sort of seem like a no-brainer. But that being said, I do want to make the argument for certain key factors of this camera, the Ursa Mini, so that you can make an informed decision if it is that you're looking to purchase one of these two cameras. There are certain areas in which this one outperforms the Ursa Broadcast G2. So first things first, I'd like to talk about codecs. And you'll notice immediately, this is the Ursa Mini, look at the amount of Blackmagic RAW options you have versus over here, yes, you can record up to 6K resolution, but there's less options. And if we look at ProRes, there's no 6K option. In fact, the highest resolution you can record at is 3840 by 2160, which means that the Ursa Mini can record a higher resolution than the Ursa Broadcast in ProRes, despite the Ursa Broadcast having a higher resolution sensor which is just a little bit unfortunate in my opinion. If we take a look at the different ProRes options, you'll see that we have XQ444, HQ422, Light and Proxy. I have used these personally in the past. Sometimes when we have an extra shot and we don't have a lot of memory, I have used even ProRes Proxy, believe it or not, because sometimes that's just what you need. And if we take a look at the H.264 slash 5 option, you can only record H.264 in HD, or H.265 in Ultra HD, everything else is grayed out. Blackmagic really wants people to be using DaVinci, but I don't really appreciate spending $4,000 on a camera and being limited through software because they want to push their software. And while I'm still here on the couch, let's go back to Blackmagic RAW. Let's do a 12 to one compression on both at the maximum resolution that each camera is capable of recording at, and then look at some of our frame rate options. So. The Ursa Mini can record, oops, can record up to 60 frames per second, and the Ursa Broadcast can record up to 50 frames per second. 6K, 4.6K. However, on both of these cameras, you can select on the frame rate and select off-speed frame rate. There's also a button on the side of the camera that says HFR and get even faster frame rates. So on the Ursa Mini, at 4.6K, you can go up to 120 frames per second, which is fantastic. Whereas the Ursa Broadcast, you're still limited to 50. Now, if we go back to our menu and select Ultra HD on both of the cameras, Ultra HD and Ultra HD, and then do the same thing, the Ursa Mini can record up to 150 frames per second, whereas the Ursa Broadcast can do 60 frames per second. Last but not least, if we set both cameras to HD, the Ursa Mini can record up to 300 frames per second, whereas the Ursa Broadcast can record up to 150 frames per second. Which means that in every codec, the Ursa Mini can outperform the Ursa Broadcast when we're talking about frame rates. The last thing I'd like to take a look at is the image itself. None of these comparison videos are ever finished without actually looking at the footage. So let's look at both of these cameras footage in the different dynamic range profiles that Blackmagic provides. 
Okay, so I've organized all of the footage in DaVinci. Let's take a look at this side-by-side -side comparison. So I'd like to start by showing you a side-by-side -side of the extended video dynamic range profile. I'll give you guys five seconds to look at this and see if you can figure out which camera is which. So the camera on the right is in fact the new Broadcast G2. Whether you got it right or wrong, I would love to know what it is that you were looking for in the image to see which camera was which. And please drop me a comment, I'm very, I'm very curious. Personally, I work with these cameras a lot. So I do know that the new Gen 5 color science does tend to skew a little bit greener. I also do wanna point out how well this broadcast camera is handling this very not great lighting environment. I mean, the background is very lit, I am underexposed, and I still look pretty decent. I would almost say that as far as exposure goes, it's doing better than the Ursa Mini, which supposedly has two more stops of dynamic range. And on the topic of dynamic range, I would like to show you the other profiles. So here we have a side-by-side -side of both cameras. Once again, the Ursa Mini is on the left and the Ursa Broadcast is on the right. And even though the Ursa Mini does have, on paper, more dynamic range, I have found that all of the profiles do tend to be a little bit flatter on the new Gen 5 color science. So despite it having a smaller dynamic range on paper, the result that you're actually working with, I would argue is almost better in many instances. So here, if we look at the scopes, I try to exposure match these in camera as much as possible. I haven't touched any of the color wheels in DaVinci. And you'll see that there is a lot to work with over here. Whereas if we look at the scopes in the extended video, we're not clipping in either camera, but the Ursa Broadcast is still a little bit flatter of an image than the Ursa Mini. And then when we go to video mode, we'll see that the Ursa Mini is clipping and the Ursa Broadcast is still retaining those highlights in a very comfortable space, despite it having, once again, a smaller dynamic range on paper. So this was very interesting to see. I'll also show you guys here some side-by-side -side footage of the Ursa Mini on the left, the Ursa Broadcast on the right with the broadcast lens. So now this is a Fujinon 4K 22X broadcast lens. Now, since we are using it in a broadcast environment, we are cropping into the sensor. And so we will start to get certain artifacts such as noise and light, but we do see similar results as far as the Gen 5 color science is concerned. Before we finish this image comparison sequence, I always like to do a low light test as well as a tungsten test. So here we're doing both of them at the same time. The cameras are both set to 6 dB of gain. And what I find interesting is the bluish tint that we get in the shadows on the Ursa Mini. So here we have the Ursa Broadcast on the left and the Ursa Mini on the right. That bluish tint is something that I have noticed on this Ursa Mini in poor lighting scenarios. The Ursa Broadcast is performing quite well and that Gen 5 color is a little punchier, I have noticed as well. That doesn't seem to change here and it is very manageable if you use different picture profiles. Anyways, everyone, that's it for me. I really hope this video was insightful and that you got something out of it. If you did, a like and subscribe would go a very long way. And if you do subscribe, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.